I'm Sadie Guinness, and I'm gonna tell you what the f just happened in the society. And after you watch this, please watch more of our What the f videos. Set in a small Connecticut town that had recently been plagued by a terrible smell. I thought they took care of that. The Netflix drama follows a group of upperclassmen who are supposed to go on this week-long field trip to the Smoky Mountains. However, when they wake up after the bus trip, they aren't at the National Park, they're right back home, with the bus driver revealing that because the road was blocked, they just had to return them to West Ham. All the kids call their parents to pick them up, but no one answers, so they walk home and their houses are empty too. It's weird. They can't get a hold of anyone and their phones only seem to be able to connect them to the other kids who are on the bus trip. 911 doesn't even work, the cable and internet is down, so West Ham is completely technologically isolated. And it turns out the town is literally isolated too. The roads become forest right outside the town border. All the kids are freaking out, and the former student body president, Cassandra, steps up and sort of takes control of the situation. How do you want to decide things? But not everyone likes Cassandra's very reasonable request to share everything, including food and the workload. And so this misogynistic creep, Dewey, winds up murdering Cassandra. Cassandra was the problem, right? And then her younger sister, Allie, has to step up and take on the mantle of leader. Although Allie never wanted this job, she really grows into it and she learns how to make tough decisions like executing Dewey and figuring out how these kids can have enough food to survive the winter. But a lot of these teens can't bear the socialist lifestyle and some just straight up want power. You're gonna run for mayor against Allie. When there is an official election for town mayor, Allie is running against poor little rich boy Harry and embattled improv girl Lexi. But then Allie's cousin Campbell, like a legitimate psychopath, we're gonna take it. Winds up staging this whole coup, roping Harry and Lexi into it, and framing Allie and her right hand man Will for trying to steal the election. So now Lexi and Harry are co mayors, Campbell has a direct line to power, and Allie and Will are locked up God knows where. The society's dystopian politics are impressively well executed, but this show is so much more than just like sexy Lord of the Flies. It's also this big mystery series. The writing on the wall is gone. The West Ham the kids left from and the West Ham they returned to on the buses are definitely not the same place. So like, where the hell are they and how the hell did they get here? This is everything we know about the mystery. That sounded weird and I didn't like it. What should I say instead? So here's what we know about the big mystery. There was a smell that went away and now it's back. It's probably connected to that terrible smell that the town had been infected with. When Campbell's brother Sam had been searching through files at the town hall, he found that some guy named Pfeiffer had been contracted to get rid of the smell, but then his parents had reneged on that contract and refused to pay the $1.5 million Pfeiffer was promised. This was dated two days before the kids were taken and one day before the smell returned. The show's creator, Chris Kaiser, also strongly hinted to me that the smell is not only literal, but metaphorical. So it seems as though things are truly rotten in West Ham, or West Sham, as the vandalized sign says. <laughs> Plus, before the kids left on their field trip, that morning, Harry and his girlfriend Kelly went to visit his mom at her office where they saw her, Campbell and Sam's dad, and seemingly the mayor in a fight with this man who they later figure out is Pfeiffer. As if this isn't suspicious enough, when Kelly is later looking through photos on her friend Becca's phone, she notices that the man who drove the bus that took them to this new world I think I know him. is the same man she had seen fighting with Harry's mom, Pfeiffer, was the bus driver. And this really is a new world. It's a f***ing solar eclipse. In the second episode, there's a solar eclipse and this kid Gordy is like, this is not a sign from God. It's just a predictable astronomical occurrence. Like, chill the f*** out. Sidebar, Gordy's a creep. Well, if we got home, you wouldn't need me anymore. But then his friend Bean is like, hold up, I got a farmer's almanac. The next like predicted solar eclipse isn't for many years. And so they like do a bunch of sky research and figure out that although all the constellations you would expect to see in West Ham are there, they're all slightly degrees off and you can't even see any satellites or anything else that should be in the sky. So they come to the conclusion that the place they are actually in is a parallel universe. But we all knew that the answer was going to be weird. I don't think there is a word to describe exactly exactly the situation they're in. I think parallel universe is as close as we get, but it's like this world was seemingly created specifically for this purpose. And it's not actually like a whole world, it's like a town. While the kids still don't know how they got to this parallel universe, like especially by a bus, the bigger question is why they are there. It's clear that this whole situation is somehow connected to the bad things their parents did. So then the kids start to wonder, 
Are they being punished for their parents' sins, or were they just taken as a means to punish the parents? This punishment theory is supported by the graffiti some of the football bros saw on the church wall before they were taken on the bus. Mene, mene, tackle you for some. This is known as the writing on the wall from the Bible story, Belshazzar's Feast, and it literally means you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. If that was about anything, it was about our parents. The entire message of this story is whether history will repeat itself or if the next generation will be able to learn from the previous one's mistakes. That means that whatever power is behind bringing the kids to this new world, which they name New Ham, might actually be doing it to give them a second chance and prove that they can be better than their parents, the idea that these kids actually may be given some sort of blessing in disguise is emphasized even more when Grizz reads a passage from Henry David Thoreau's Walden. And I assume you're gonna use B-roll there, so do I need to read that whole f***ing thing? I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. After this, Gwen wonders if they are lucky to have been given this opportunity, and maybe they have been looking at this entire situation from the wrong perspective the whole time. Thoreau wrote Walden after two years practicing simple living in nature, and he really believed in self-sufficiency and understanding society through introspection, things that the kids in Newham have been forced to do because of these circumstances. And as Sam points out, the roots of New England being a hypocritical cesspool go like way, way, way back. And so it might have taken something as drastic as bringing these kids to a parallel universe in order to give them a second chance and see if humanity can actually do better this time around. Also, do you know how deep down this rabbit hole I went? And I was like, Newham was founded in 1642. What happened in Connecticut around then? Turns out some Connecticut forces joined with some other like, you know, white people and massacred a local indigenous tribe around then. But one thing is definitely clear though. Even if the kids aren't necessarily being punished, their parents for sure are. In the final moments of the finale, we actually get our first look back at the original world when we see Allie and Cassandra's mom attend a reading of Peter Pan, where everyone's wearing these commemorative yellow ribbons. We also see a massive commemorative plaque declaring we remember them, listing the names of all the kids who went missing from the bus that day. The symbolism of Allie's mom reading Peter Pan, you know, all children need to grow up except one, is pretty on the nose, but there are some references woven into this season that are a bit more complicated, but may reveal a lot about what's to come. The most notable of these references was in the first episode when Harry and Cassandra starred in a production of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. I've never even heard of this play until now. The play is an absurdist existential tragic comedy about two minor characters from Shakespeare's Hamlet. And the scene we see Harry and Cassandra act out is one in which Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are flipping a coin again and again and again, and it always comes up heads. Once they arrive in Newham, we see Harry and Cassandra flip a coin again, only this time it always comes up tails. In the play, the coin flip scene represents the randomness of the world and the occurrence of highly improbable events. That scene was also used to demonstrate how Rosencrantz and Guildenstern felt as though they were completely unable to change their fate, just like they weren't able to change the way the coin landed in the toss. But by giving themselves completely over to fate and not actually taking advantage of free will, they wound up paying for this passivity with their lives. This might mean that if the kids of Newham don't fully embrace taking on the responsibility of trying to make meaningful choices, even in a confusing <laughs> up world, they might have to meet a similar fate as to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. And the co-election of Harry and Lexi is definitely an indication that these kids are not moving in the right direction right now. But it's the best that we can do. The season finale left us with so many burning questions, so I'm gonna try and break them down. What happens now that Lexi, Harry, and Cam are in charge. I want to pull the strings a bit. It's inevitable that these three are going to start turning on each other, but while the three of them are so occupied on each other, I don't trust Harry and Lexi. There's a chance that maybe Helena is actually going to swoop in and overthrow this new government. When I spoke to the creator, Chris, he said that when things get really bad, someone with a religious message becomes very powerful often. And if Helena finds out the truth and that Luke had lied, there is no way that she's gonna stand by her man. She could use her position as the religious leader of Newham to maybe gain a legion of followers strong enough to overthrow Campbell, Lexi, and Harry. But also, are Allie and Will gonna be okay? Should we just skip that one? They're gonna be fucking fine. And also, who is the father of Becca's baby, Eden? It's clear that Becca is hiding something about the identity of the dad, 
And Chris said that the truth of the matter will have a lot of judgment attached and will not only bring some people together, but tear other people apart. When Becca and Sam are discussing the identity of the father, at one point she says it doesn't really matter anymore, making me wonder if the father is actually one of the parents who is no longer in the same world as them. At another point while talking about the pregnancy, Becca also says, I don't have a choice, which on one level could be referring to the lack of available options that she would have had if she was still in West Ham, but she also may have been referring to the conception itself. If Becca was sexually assaulted, especially by one of their parents, that could explain why she is guarding the secret so closely and why she's hesitant to talk about it even with her best friend Sam. Are we gonna see more of West Ham in future seasons? In the finale, we got our first look back at the original world since the teens left, but Chris said just because of that, that doesn't mean that suddenly the show is gonna be split like 50-50 between West Ham and New Ham. He did say that we will likely occasionally get to go back and see what the parents are up to, but it's not gonna become a show that is as much about the parents as it is about the kids. That being said, the parents will continue to play a big role in the overarching mystery, even if we don't see them often. But the biggest question of all is what is the deal with that dog. We see this beautiful black and white dog first at the scene of Cassandra's murder, then later Elle adopts it and Campbell seemingly kills it, and then it's suddenly back in West Ham outside of the Peter Pan library reading. Right now it's the only creature, human or animal, that we've seen exist in both universes, and there aren't even other pets in New Ham, so it's the only dog there too. When I asked Chris about this, he said that yes, the dog is extremely significant, but he couldn't really elaborate more on what the dog is or what the dog means. So clearly like this is a big clue. Is the dog God? Or is the dog a vessel? for a higher being that is watching how the kids are doing? Is the dog able to somehow travel between universes like the bus? Is the dog just a dog? No, that's the only thing that I can answer definitively. The interesting thing is Chris did imply that we didn't see the dog's body after Campbell killed it. So it's still technically unclear whether it is even alive or dead back in New Ham. I think we're gonna see this dog again. No, I don't think so. But are we ever gonna get the answers to all of these questions? The hardest part with a mystery show is setting audience expectations about how much they should expect to be answered and like how much is gonna be left ambiguous. Chris did assure me that he already knows the answers to all of the questions the show is gonna pose and that he doesn't plan on keeping people entirely in the dark. But for now, share your theories on what you think the significance of the dog is and why the kids were brought to New Ham in the comments below. Love it. I hate you. <laughs>